Recently, Fonalhort Techno Solutions, a Tokyo-based research firm, conducted a teardown analysis of DJI Mavic Air 2 drone, which was launched by DJI in 2020. The teardown results shocked everyone. It showed that nearly 80% of the chips in the drone were from chip companies outside mainland China. This high reliance on foreign chips by DJI, coupled with recent US restrictions, has raised concerns in the Chinese industry. Specifically, the core rotor support chips and flight control system in the drone are DJI's proprietary patented technology, while the chips responsible for core battery, wireless signal, and noise reduction are from Texas Instruments and Corvo in the US and the visual unit module chips responsible for facial perception, gesture recognition, and auxiliary safety landing algorithm are from Movidius, a subsidiary of Intel. The gyroscopic microelectronic chips responsible for drone flight capability are from Invencent and ADI in the US, and the global navigation system module chips are from Ublox in Europe. However, it is worth noting that most of these chips are produced using 20 nanometers to 65 nanometers technology, rather than advanced process chips. If the process requirements are not strict, why are such high-priced chips imported? In addition, with the intensification of Sino-US trade friction, will drone chips face the risk of supply disruption from overseas suppliers? Okay, that and more is exactly what we are going to talk about today, let's get started. First, why does DJI rely so heavily on imported chips for its drones? For civil drones, at least 11 types of chips are required, including core visual chips, main control chips, and power supply chips, as well as interface converters, communication, and other chips that support the drone's core flight control system, sensing system, data transmission and transport, and networking settings. There are three main reasons for choosing imported chips. Firstly, China still relies on imported high-end components. While some chips, such as interface converters and low-power power supply chips, can be replaced by domestic alternatives, China still has a high dependence on foreign chips for main control chips and sensors. Drone sensors require low power consumption, high sensitivity, and miniaturization, and those that can meet these requirements mostly come from Japanese and American manufacturers such as Invention Sense, Micropilot, PolarPro, and UAvionics. In addition, in the field of main control chips, there are over 10 manufacturers in the US such as Qualcomm, Intel, ST Microelectronics, Texas Instruments, TI, and Nvidia. Furthermore, since visual chips usually require high computational and deep learning operations, the chip process requirements are relatively stringent, usually requiring 12 to 14 nanometers. Although some Chinese companies have emerged that can provide substitute products, there is still a significant gap in their specific applications. The second is the need for complex and expensive development. UAVs rely on control software for autonomous flight. Some existing UAV control software lacks drivers for Chinese-made chips, requiring developers to create new drivers and replace files. For example, DJI has been using the STM32 series for many years, accumulating a lot of development experience. However, switching to a new product requires readaptation, and a large amount of single chip logic code needs to be ported, rewritten, and tested. Although this does not affect reliability or performance, the time cost is enormous. The third is cost control. DJI's competitive advantage largely comes from its low manufacturing price. Foreign manufacturers generally have mature design and R&D capabilities, as well as some universal or approximate chip architectures. The cost of this is relatively low when amortized. In contrast, Chinese chip companies are relatively small, and the price of chips fluctuates greatly. They also cannot produce them as a branch business like foreign large companies. This fluctuation is a risk for a large enterprise, so it will not change easily in order to control risk and reduce costs. So, as the US-China trade friction intensifies, will China's UAV chips face the risk of supply chain disruption from overseas suppliers? In short, DJI has its confidence in the face of the possible chip supply crisis. First, DJI has a core competitive advantage technology. The rotor support chip for its flight control system is independently developed, and the core technology of the UAV flight control system is also self-developed. This system is not an open-source system, and the underlying code is proprietary. Others cannot modify or learn its source code, which means it maintains independence and autonomy in flight control system technology. 
DJI's PR director Sir Khan once said, DJI's underlying code for UAVs is all its own, and any UAV company finds it difficult to bypass DJI's 14,000 patents, including companies in the United States. Second, DJI has powerful parts integration technology. A senior executive of a Japanese company said, to achieve the same performance, Japanese companies will have material costs that are twice the price of the whole machine. The R1 drone from Skidio, an American company, is sold for $2,500, but still cannot match DJI's high-resolution photos at more than three times the price. It can be seen that low cost is the source of DJI's competitive advantage. In recent years, China has rapidly become a manufacturing and technology powerhouse in the UAV industry. According to statistics, DJI occupies more than 70% of the global consumer UAV market and is ranked first among global civilian UAV companies. In addition, according to data from Drone Industry Insights, in 2020, DJI's market share in the US consumer UAV market reached 76.1%. DJI needs core chips from the US while the US needs suitable and low-cost drone products from DJI. These two are interdependent. However, this does not mean that DJI is safe. US drone technology will not stand still. They will continue to advance in manufacturing and research and development of drone technology. It is still possible for them to further narrow the gap with domestic drones in terms of cost and price in the future. Therefore, the real hope lies in China's local chip companies. This is the only way to maximize the elimination of external restrictions. In the application of drone chips, China's domestic chips have far more opportunities than foreign ones, which is China's advantage. Yang Zhong, an engineer at the Beihang Unmanned Systems Research Institute, said that most of the components in a drone are low-end chips. Only a few high-end chips are needed, such as one vision chip and one or two control chips. However, it requires some power chips, a large number of interface conversion chips, and a huge number of resistors and capacitors. China can produce these interfaces and low-end chips. But why are China's domestic companies slow to act? Because the profit margin is too low. China's chip companies are currently too small to produce them as a branch business like foreign large enterprises. Therefore, to solve the problem of independent research and development of core drone chips, it is necessary to increase market development and innovation. According to predictions, the scale of China's civil drone market will reach 207.559 billion yuan in 2024. Among them, the scale of the industrial drone market will increase to 150.785 billion yuan, accounting for about 73% of the scale of China's civil drone market, up from 19% in 2015, with an average annual compound growth rate of 54.52% from 2015 to 2024. Now, as demand increases and China's market advantages become apparent, domestic chip companies should seize this opportunity, find breakthroughs, accumulate profits, and then iterate continuously. Currently, some companies have invested in drone chip research and development, such as China's Rockchip and Spreadtrum. In DJI's Phantom 4, the Spreadtrum solution LC1860 was used, which is also applied in the first generation of drones of zero-tech intelligence control. Rockchip also showcased and test flew drone products based on RK3288 in China. There are also companies that can provide products with performance equivalent to the highly demanding vision chips and deep learning chips. This industry is just beginning, and there are still many possibilities in the future. For China's chip companies, the drone chip is a great opportunity. Well, thanks for your watching, and please be free to put your comments below and share your insightful ideas. Please keep following our channel and like our videos. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that are worth spreading every day. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.